Hi, everyone. This is Shailene Kiner with Headhunters Northwest Podcast. I'm really excited to have Ryan Donahue, the general manager for Stag Arms, on this podcast. And um, just super excited to talk to Ryan because he's one of the most interesting people in our shooting sports industry and diehard fan. So welcome, Ryan. Well, thanks for having me, Shailene. I could not be more excited to be one of your first guests on the podcast and uh, super thrilled to talk to everybody about STAG and all the new things that are going on. But um, I give you a little introduction to myself, I guess, why Shailene says, you know, I'm interesting uh, in the in the space. So I grew up in um, I grew up in New York. So uh, right outside the city uh, was called Westchester County. And my love for firearms started there, believe it or not, in New York. Um, We, my father used to take us, so Hudson River, Mm -hmm. our house was on one side of the Hudson River and we could literally see West Point Military Academy from the other side. Um, So if you guys are ever in that area, my suggestion, you know, my love of firearms, I haven't been there in a long time, started at West Point going to see the cadets. Um, wow. my father used to take me to the football games. So, uh, I don't know if too many people know this, but the West Point military football games, they actually fly a Chinook, um, over the field and like two or three cadets jump out and have the football land in the middle of the field. That is really cool. I did not know that. So, um, love seeing that stuff. And then the firearms piece. So every time we would go out there, uh, there was this giant museum and the museum houses some of like the coolest pieces of military history. So um, the original A-bomb housing is there. Um, And then every firearm stepping through, you know, the progression of firearms from the beginning of time all the way to the modern firearms that we all know are there in kind of a timeline fashion. So I I just, you know, when I was a little kid, that was, the coolest thing in the whole world. So yeah, it would be a cool thing for any of us at any age. So we used to go there all the time. Um, My parents were both school teachers. So um, during the summers, we would always go to Florida. So we had a little, 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 little place in Florida and the family would go out there, me, my parents, my brother. And when it came time to go to college, um, I decided, you know, they were like, Hey, where do you want to go? And who doesn't want to go to school in Florida? Right. Yeah. So um, I went to the University of Miami. So I'm a I'm a cane. Um, <laughs> so uh, I was there when they were actually good at football when we won a couple of national championships. Um, so I went to the U and then right after college, got my master's degree, met my wife. Um, I loved movies. Right. So uh, my wife had said, uh, hey, there's a, actually a job here in Florida that says they work on Hollywood productions. I was like, no. So I go to this interview and Shailene, they, um, I've never experienced anything like it. Walked in the door and the secretary at the thing said, hey, nice to meet you. You know, hey, I'm Ryan Donahue. I'm very excited for the interview. She drops two stacks of paper on the desk and says, here's an IQ test. Here's a reasoning test. You have 30 minutes. Your time has already started. Oh my gosh. So, um, and I'm Talk looking about around, intimidating. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking around the office and they're working on the matrix reloaded at the time. Um, so I was like, I need to get a job here. So, um, you know, got through the crazy interview process, got through all the stuff, uh, started out as an editor there and then wound up wow. going all the way up through and really just running the production house and reporting directly to the owner. Um, got to work on some crazy projects, uh, worked on some of the Marvel movies, some Quentin Tarantino stuff, did, uh, some projects that, um, I'm sure that a lot of people use on a daily basis for Amazon and Apple. Um, so worked on a lot of that stuff, but the entire time that I was working in the movie industry, I was going every weekend to go shoot three gun. So three gun is you know, one of my loves and one of my passions. Um, it's just, you know, there's not many things that you can do in the world where they let you run around with a pistol, a rifle and a shotgun and yeah, shoot all kinds of crazy targets and stuff. So um, you're part of the adrenaline club. Yeah. So started out doing yeah. that stuff and really just fell into the three gun hole. You know, like people say that it, it's just, becomes an addiction and it really does. Yeah. You, know, you start getting more and more gear and working on more and more stuff. 
Um, so started going to national matches and doing all that stuff and just really loved it. Um, and at that time, you know, the years are progressing, uh, working on the movie stuff. And as you can imagine, uh, some of the people in the movie industry stuff, most of the people are not the greatest people. You know, my, my boss and mentor at the time, um, always taught me something that stayed with me. You can, you can disagree, but never be disagreeable. Mm -hmm. And I find that there's a lot of disagreeable people, uh, yeah. in that industry. So I came home one day after, you know, a tough day working on something and told my wife, Hey, you know, I think I really want to make a change and do something completely different. And she was like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to, you know, I love firearms. I want to go work in the firearms industry. And I had had, you know, some connections and stuff there from doing a few things. So interviewed at quite a few different places, SIG, all of these different places, but um, wound up choosing Crimson Trace, not because it was the biggest, but because the people there really felt like family, you know, yeah. they're yeah, having a really good, group good time, of people. really good people. And, you know, at that time, Crimson was the leader, still, still is the leader of lasers and lights um working on an optics line and all of this different stuff so went to crimson and then i'm sure everybody knows how that all came to be so you got crimson trace then american outdoor brands which is basically i actually have one of the mugs sitting here so you guys can see nice oh, a, lot of people, a lot of people don't know but uh aob so when it first was was smith and wesson m p performance center gem tech crimson trace caldwell wheeler tipton i mean there's 22 different brands underneath that, you know, big juggernaut. So mm -hmm. um, wound up going to Crimson and AOB was like, we got to get Ryan to come over to the main office. So went over there and ran a lot of the marketing side for all of the shooting brands, which, right, that's a dream come true. Yes, absolutely. It's like exactly what you could have hoped for if you could build yourself a job. Yep. So worked on, got to work on all the different brands and learned a lot. Um, got to work with Brian, who's the CEO over at AOB and, you know, uh, awesome guy, awesome group of people over there. But then, you know, the opportunity came for Stag and um, who doesn't want to be able to have, you know, a leading role in a firearms uh, company. So yeah. love all the folks over at AOB, uh, had an amazing time there, learned a ton, but really, you know, you can't pass up something like this. Plus I got to move closer to you, uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Right. right. So. Not too far from me. I'm only, well, I think we're only like maybe four hours apart, yep. three hours, maybe drive. So but, I mean, you, you went from 22 plus brands to now you can focus on one brand. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was telling you that the other day and I told my wife that too, of, you know, think about the fact of all the things that I have to juggle. So, you know, um, there's really not that many companies that are like that out in the world. When I was looking at different stuff, Vista, you know, obviously another one that has all of the brands under one mm -hmm. roof is like, you know, you're one of a few people that has it has ever had to juggle this. So, uh, and I said to Stacy, my wife, imagine, you know, how much time and how much passion and how much everything I could put into if I was just focusing on one. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the GM position came up and there was no way I could pass it up. So we're out here in Chey lovely Cheyenne, Wyoming now. And it's really cool. Um, you know, if you guys are ever driving through the area, uh, we literally out my back window, Magpul is across the street and right down the road from us is Thunder Beast uh, suppressors. Oh, I so, don't think I knew that. Yeah. So we have, you know, great company. And then obviously Weatherby's out in Sheridan. Yep. And from what I hear, there's a couple other firearms companies that are heading towards Cheyenne. You know, it's Wyoming is a great state. Very firearms friendly. Yeah, it is. And, it, and it's a pretty awesome place to to live, you know, we're Cheyenne is uh, the border for Denver, I think is like 12 miles from our yeah, office. It's not very far at all. So you get to be in Cheyenne, which is the capital of Wyoming, um, the most populated place in Wyoming, which I think we have a whopping uh, 61,000 residents. There's a um, lot of stores there you could need though, yeah. right? I yep. mean, you know, you guys have everything. I came through the other day and did some shopping and then 
I think from Cheyenne to Denver Airport is only what? Is it an hour and a half? Yeah, it takes me like uh, an hour 35, an hour 40. Okay. Um, Fort Collins, uh, which again, even more stores and stuff there. The closest Costco? Or do the, you guys have the, Costco there? No, we don't have a Costco. But we you have, do in, But you do in Fort Collins. Right. So Fort Collins is about 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, really cool. One of the coolest Shield stores is there. If so, I don't think I knew that. I will tell you, next time you're driving through, you need to go see that one. Okay, I will. Um, if, if you love firearms, uh, stop at a Shields. I mean, it's one of okay. the coolest, um, even just outdoor stuff. You know, the entire first floor yep. is all outdoor camping, yep. uh, fishing, all of that stuff. And then you go upstairs. Upstairs is where I like to be. So upstairs <laughs> is where all the firearms, accessories, gear, but just the way that they display stuff, the way that they show stuff off is... We have a Shields here, um, and they're very good customer service. Very good people. Yep. Very nice store. So off this, now I have another destination. To there stop. you go. And I think there's actually a Costco across the street from it, so you can hit hit both of them. I know where the Costcos are, so I can locate <laughs> that. So tell us a little bit about Stag Arms and what your tell me about the culture you guys are building there, and how how things are in Cheyenne and your offices, and the type of people that work there. Yeah. So um, really, you know, I came from a monster company, right? Thousands right. of employees. So so making a complete change again, which I seem to do a lot in my career is just, uh, you know, complete. That's good, though. Um, so and again, publicly traded AOB was publicly traded. So it's uh, it's nice to not have the publicly traded beast that's overtopping you watching every single thing that is going on. Yeah. Um, a lot of pressure. So, a lot of pressure. Not that there's not a lot of pressure here for yeah. for Stag, but you know, different kind, different stuff. Yep. So, um, Stag's been around for let's see. Well, we got a couple more days until the new year. So when we hit the new year, Stag will be on their two decades, so twenty years. And they did they start in Connecticut. They started in Connecticut, believe it or not. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the big pieces of Stag, which I absolutely fell in love with. Um, from the marketing and branding side is, you know, we never are going to compromise or give up on the left-handed customer. So, or the left eye dominant customer. So that started in wow. Connecticut where they were making right-handed firearms as well as left-handed firearms. So left eject and right eject. I actually have a couple. That, that is can, really cool. So the left-handed customer is very big. Um, and then we also found, you know, they were calling it a left-handed gun. And we started talking about, you know, it's really a left eject gun because if you've been around people who are shooting for a long, long time, um, and you can, you can find this out at your house if you don't know, you literally just look at something on the wall, hold up your hands like this, and then pull your hands towards your eye. And that eye is going to tell you what your dominant eye is. Mm -hmm. So when you give somebody, I'm sure we've all seen it when you go to the range, somebody gets on a rifle and they're trying to like do this kind of thing where they're trying yeah. to put the other eye on the rifle. So giving somebody a left-handed gun that actually makes them fit and feel. And, you know, for a left-handed shooter, they don't have all that brass and debris and everything going into their face. So we have left-handed versions of almost every one of our firearms. The other piece that's huge because of Connecticut, um, we will never give up on all of the states that have different compliance rules. So we're one of the few companies that are out there that still have left-handed firearms, but also make a Maryland compliant, a New York compliant, wow. a New Jersey compliant. So I learned a lot about the compliance rules yeah. you know, coming here. And we have, you know, that's why when you look at stag skew list, you're like, whoa, there's a lot of guns there. But it's because, you know, you got lots lefts, of choices. lefts and rights. And then you've got the compliant guns. And then you start adding colors and the numbers start to scream up. That's a lot to keep track of. Yep. So that's a big part of our culture, a big part of who stag is. The other thing that we talk about all the time is we have three kind of um, things that are underneath everything that we do on the bottom of print ads, wherever we put them. Um, we talk about number one, which is the big one, hundred percent American made. So um, big deal to me. Yeah, big deal. And it, it goes through literally everything that we do, everything that we look at. 
um, from, you know, accessory side all the way through the actual components themselves that make up the firearms. So 100% American made. And then we have two really cool warranties that um, we all know how amazing Gore-Tex did in the industry with their warranties. I mean, it's it's game changer and now, you know, industry leader and then everybody else had to follow, right? So uh, Stag has 100%, you know, lifetime warranty, fully transferable. So anything happens with the firearm, um, we have really award-winning customer service team, which is really cool. Uh, the guy who runs our customer service came from Connecticut, so he wanted to stay. Wow, that's that. great. Um, so award-winning customer service. And really, if you found yourself having one of the older stag guns that maybe we don't make anymore, and God forbid something happens, you call up stag customer service, explain to them what's going on. If they can't get it running again or send it in and we have it fixed, we're going to get you into a new gun. We're going to say, hey, you know, this gun is equal to about a, you know, $800, $900 MSRP, go pick what you want on the website and we'll wow. send it to you. That's incredible. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know any of that. I'm glad to know that. And then number three is kind of a cool one, which I don't think anybody else has. Uh, we have an infinite shot barrel guarantee. So really? again, if you, God forbid, you put 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 rounds on the gun, something happens with the barrel or keyholes, whatever it happens mm-hmm. to start doing, we will replace that barrel for the life of the gun. Wow. So that's incredible. Those are a big part of everything we do. Um, it is a smaller team here, which I absolutely love. Uh, we all have a membership. You know, if, as soon as I got here, I said, hey, do we have a membership to that crazy range that's down the road? Yeah. And they were like, no, you know, kind of the people go there and test and Magpul goes there and test. And I was like, OK, everybody's getting a range membership. So, yeah, that's cool. You know, everybody, um, because it's a smaller team, we all do a lot of stuff together inside Mm -hmm. and outside of the office. We go shoot together. We, you know, have fun together. Uh, So it really is a cool dynamic. And it's not, um, I'm sure people watching this who have worked at different companies, sometimes you'll go a month, a week, you know, a couple weeks without seeing maybe the vice president or the GM or the president or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're all out there working together. I, I love the marketing side cause that's kind of my background. So getting and going to sit with the graphic design folks and looking at, you know, what they're doing for print ads or whatever it happens to be is, is really, everybody's fun. involved. Everybody's yeah. included, not a yep. bunch of silos. And speaking of print ads, so shameless plug, um, <gasps> Stag does have the cover of guns and ammo. Uh, Sweet. if you guys are, if you guys are walking in there, so it talks about, you know, multiple choice. So the right and left-handed firearms. That's really cool. Yeah. So um, we, you know, we're really, I think you're going to start seeing a lot, lot more stag uh, in this year in 23. Um, I, if I have anything to say about it, you know, <laughs> use so all tell that. us tell, before we go into your open positions, because people are, yep. I think are going to want to know more about stag arms, having met you and hear what you guys are up to. Tell us a little about it, any new products or anything. Yeah, and I, actually, I know we're not a product release <laughs> podcast, but I always like to look at your stuff. Like I got to see some stuff at NASGW. I actually brought a couple of the, the toys out here. So this this is a left eject firearm. So you can see that the port is on the, yep. the left side there. And then this is our tactical. So this is what's on the guns and ammo cover. Wow. So That's what I'll great. tell you about this gun is because we are shooters, um, we wanted to give people out of the box something that they don't have to go and upgrade. I'm sure that everybody's bought a rifle. Right. And you're like, okay, well, the first thing I need to change is the stock and then right. the grip. So these both Magpul. Then, you know, we've got a custom trigger in here from Hyperfire that they did for us. Full ambi safeties. Um, our new breech charging handle is on there. So we've got some really cool uh, features that are inside of this gun, the new VG6 comp on the front. So it's really upgraded and ready to go out of the box. Um, Someone like me would appreciate that. My husband wants to, you know, go and get things he can customize. But for me, that's something I would appreciate because I think I just want to get one and I want to go to the range and I want to use it and I don't want to have to learn everything I need to know about triggers yep. or anything else. So that's that's a pretty cool feature. And then I'll show you one more real quick. So you look at the color. This is like a burnt bronze. I like that color. a lot. 
So um, this is our new pursuit line. So most people haven't even seen this yet. Wow. So uh, really cool features. And then on the stock here, you'll kind of see that there's a leather. Uh -huh. Very from, nice. From Stag. So it's our, our hunting line. Um, Timney trigger inside of there. We all know how amazing Timney is, yep. especially in the hunting market. So the pursuit line is kind of a precursor to everything that we're going to do here. The first thing that I looked at when I came to Stag is the product line, right? We've got to make sure that we have an awesome product roadmap. So um, the AR side, obviously we're expanding, expanding into hunting. I'll tell you guys, we haven't even talked about this publicly, but because it's you, we'll tell you. And we're, we're really wow. close. Okay. So, at SHOT Show, um, if you guys come over to the STAG booth, you're going to see something very different. So we'll we'll have our first bolt gun um, oh. at SHOT Show. So we've been working on that really hard since I got here. And then um, I'll Watch definitely... Watch out, Adam. Watch out. Competition. We got, we got that bolt gun coming, um, which is really cool. And it's not just a Me Too bolt gun. It's got a lot of features on it that are completely different than things that you've seen in the industry. Um, cool. The other piece that I'll tell you, super, super hint. So I won't um, break anybody from marketing. Come in here and beat me <laughs> up. Uh, so we are in Cheyenne, Wyoming. So you may see some guns from us that are very Cheyenne-esque uh, oh. coming in the future. If you can. Oh, I can't wait. That, what that could be coming. That's from cool. Stag. So Lots have, of exciting new things happening in Stag Arms. Yeah, we do have a really aggressive product roadmap and, you know, obviously staying with the heritage of the right and left eject. We'll have a, we'll have a left, a lefty bolt gun as well. That's great. Um, so that'll be, that'll be with us at the show. So come by and check them out wait. if you guys are listening to it and you get, you see this before you go to SHOT Show. Yeah, this will be, this will be a release before SHOT Show. So there you go. Come by um, and yeah. tell me to walk through the bolt gun. I'd be happy to. Okay, good. I like it. So with all these new products, what is what does your team look like for hiring? Are you guys hiring right now? And are there positions that you are looking for people or talent you always want to talk with? Yeah, um, you know this as well as I do. The firearms industry is a small but big group of people, yeah. uh, if that kind of makes sense. And we're always looking to talk to the best talent in the industry. Right at this particular moment, we do not have any jobs posted, but I will tell you that you know, um, marketing and sales, obviously the two big hitters there, there will be some new marketing positions that are going to open up and uh, some new, probably some new sales positions opening up. We, we just hired um, a gentleman, his name is Scott to run our military law enforcement and government sales. And Scott is a 22 year special forces uh, operator. So he did um, started as a green beret and then went Delta so there's nobody wow. better. You know, you talk about talent. It's the real deal. Yeah, fitting people to the positions. You, you have wow. nobody better that could do military law enforcement sales than somebody like that. That's great. Um, so, yeah, look out for um, maybe, you never know, coming from Shailene, recruiting you for some of the marketing <laughs> positions that are higher up in the company. But those two, I would think, are going to be the big ones that Good. we're going to look for in 23. Excellent. Well, and there will be growth with all of the things you're doing there. We've already seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Um, and I think exciting changes, not changes for the sake of change. Right. But well thought out uh, plans. I do remember seeing um, that rifle at NASGW and yep. admiring the leather work. Yep. Uh, that is something and those colors are to me something I think, oh, I definitely need that added to my repertoire. Yeah, um, we we tried to uh, do something a little bit different with the gun, especially with the color. The burnt yeah, bronze is really nice. a pretty, pretty color. Yeah, very much. So tell us a little bit about um, about what you think in the next couple of years that you are going to see different from what we've experienced in the firearms in the last couple of years. Are there some changes in your time since you've you've been in the industry for quite a while? Do you see us evolving and morphing? Do you see us, you know, coming into our own? Yeah, we we joke about, you know, anybody who's in the industry, we kind of all joke about the fact that the firearms industry is almost like 10 years behind okay. any other industry that's out there in the world. Like, you know, from we still obviously all use print ads, but that's right. because, you know, of where we are in the world. Um, 
innovation wise, technology wise, you know, different things, I think are a little bit slower in the firearms industry than they are in some of the other industries that are out there. But we do appreciate our traditions. Yep. My, my guess is that, um, again, you're going to see a lot of companies uh, innovating, I think, again, yeah. um, because there are so many firearms out there. You can't just go out, you know, if you look at all of the concealed carry pistols that are out there now, yeah. right? you can't just go and make a concealed carry pistol and say, well, I have one too, right? Yeah. So there has to be something there. There has to be innovation, you know, whether it's mag capacity or whatever it happens to be. So I think you're going to see um, kind of an explosion in, I guess we'll find out at SHOT Show, right? Yeah. You're going to see an explosion of... Um, innovation, I think, in the firearms industry. I think there's going to be a lot of products out there that are just kind of new and different. And, you know, people really trying to look at, okay, this is an awesome design. How can I make it better? So, yeah. I think with our cyclical nature of our industry, I actually really do like it because it gives us a chance to where, you know, we've come off this big thing selling all these firearms and all these products. And then you have to go, okay, we're forced to innovate now yep. and take our time and do more R&D. And then I do like that. I like that we go like this because I think it keeps us moving forward. Maybe we're not high tech, but we've got it all over most other industries when it comes to relationships yep. and the teamwork that really does happen within our industry. There is no, I mean... I've had the pleasure of working in some other ones. There is no other industry like the firearms industry. I would, you'd have to pry me out of here. The, the people, <laughs> the relationships, yeah. um, just everything in the industry is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Yeah. Uh, that is not found in most places in the world. No, these are my people. I can't wait to see everyone at SHOT Show. There you go. It's like okay, a so family. As we kind of wrap this up, tell me why my favorite question to ask, and I've been enjoying this a lot so far, what's your favorite firearm and why? That is such a hard question. It's like- I know because it's lots of, it, there's so many choices. You know, um, we, do, we do a fun thing too when I'm having a good time with uh, interviews and stuff, when you find a real firearms person that loves- the toys that we play with every day, I usually ask them, Hey, if I took every firearm that you had and paid you MSR, it doesn't matter if you got it for free. doesn't matter what yeah. you did paid you MSRP and said, you can only buy from one firearms brand for the rest of your life. Which one are you going to choose? And, you know, again, it's a, it's a crazy question of like, how, how can I choose from all of the greatness that has been in the industry? Yeah. So I'm going to give you two. Okay, good. So because I work at Stag, I'm going to tell you that my favorite rifle that I've shot here, um, it's called our three gun. Again, going back to my oh, love. Yeah. Gun. It really shouldn't be called a three gun, but they had named it before I got here. So it really is just an all around awesome shooter. It comes in just over six pounds. Oh. Amazing trigger. Um, really flat shooting gun, crazy comp. It's just, it's, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome shooting gun. But looking back on life, um, especially seeing things as a kid and growing up, yeah, I have to say that my favorite gun of all time, which is, I'm sure people are going to criticize, but my favorite <laughs> gun of all time is the FM scar. Oh yeah, no, that's a good gun. I think no one's going to criticize that. Well, people make fun of it that the stock looks like an UGG boot and God knows all that, you know, that, it, you know, the, <laughs> the gun itself, you know, had some not issues. I mean, I think it's one of the most, you know, battle proven guns that's out there. But um, I, I just love the way that Scar looks. I think it's hilarious that nothing matches. I, I love that about the gun that, you know, if you're buying a Scar, don't buy the black one, buy the FDE one because nothing matches. Um, 50 shades of tan. So coming from the guy who drives a blue truck, yep, not yep. like a run of the mill black, <laughs> white. <laughs> so I, I love the, the colors on the gun. I love the way that the gun shoots. I love the way it feels. So, um, That's, cool. and it's, it's, That's it's really been, interesting. I it's like been that. used in like every movie in the history of mankind. Right. So 
you know, yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's running around with it in Inception. <laughs> it's in, you know, a ton of different movies that are out there. So um, that's my favorite. That's cool. Say. That's really cool. Very good answers. I really appreciate you uh, being willing to do this with me. It's been fun. And we will definitely, even though you, right now today you're not hiring for anything, we'll we'll promote the careers page link with awesome. this podcast because then it'll update, you know, anytime that people are yep. looking for it and when they hear. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you, Ryan. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, well, we, we're excited to see 2023 for Stag Arms. This is, we'll have to do this again a year from now and see what's go. changed. Well, we'll have, we'll definitely have new guns on the table. I'll tell you that much. Awesome. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it, Ryan. Awesome. Bye.